So the whole idea of this, because the, the person was looking, goes, I like all these ideas. He goes, I've never done a basic class where it's just like all white belts and a couple of yellow belts. And he says, well, I think I may want to change. So, you know, change can be good. Uh, towards the end of this, I start talking about a couple of our leaders in industry and how much they've changed. And it, it's kind of motivating. So I, we'll get to that towards the end. So last week we reviewed um, billing options, term programs open-ended, and then terms that flow to open-ended. And just as a reminder, um, we started this discussion about a week and a half, two weeks ago. When we we're talking about doing six-month programs that are expire in the summer and how it's just hard to get some people to renew at that time. Um, Mr. Convento then uh, was telling about what he does, and he does a, the six-month program. Um, he likes the six-month program. He also does very good at cashing out six-month programs, uh, which is really good for his cash flow. But at the same time, you know, he's pretty busy. He's got two schools. He wants to make it easy to have people transfer from the six-month program to the regular program when he doesn't really have to sit down and sell them something in three to six months. So he said what he really likes is going to an open-ended. Um, so they may pay $1,000 up front for their six-month program. At the end of the six-month programs, it just rolls over into $195 per month. I'm not recommending $195. That's what he charges. I mean, everyone's prices uh, are different depending on their demographics and where they're located in the United States. Uh, so one of the first keys to that we talked about was having a dedicated beginner's class. A de dedicated beginner's class could be called your welcome program. That's the class that everyone who's just starting in your school starts. They start with the welcome program. Uh, some people call it basic program. It doesn't really matter what the title is. It's their first six months of training. The challenge is a lot of schools don't have this. So they have like a regular beginner class where people are learning curriculum, and the beginner class could be white, yellow, orange, and purple belts. Um, there's a little challenge here. If you're always having new people join, you want them in a class that could be a rotating curriculum. Uh, they're learning some basic kicks, basic punches. They're doing moving kicks. They're doing some uh, one-step combinations. Curriculum is not hard. There's a lot, not a lot of memory, but they're developing good, strong basics. It's a fun class. People can join in that class without any training at all and not totally be lost. And we really want them in that class for three months till they get their yellow belt or six months at the longest. So it's like for a beginner student to a six month student. It's also great for trials. In the past, a lot of schools were doing one-on-one -on -one trials and they had to have an intro room, which still works good. I know I have clients doing that, but it does get expensive for someone who's just building your school. You're just building your school, you have 80 students, it's hard to have a full-time program director. He doesn't have, or she doesn't have a lot to do because you're not signing up a ton of students. Uh, you have that uh, separate floor, and then you have to have a sales room. So the new way for the, like the last 10 years are people just coming in and taking a trial class or maybe doing a mini program. Mini program being that four to six week program, but they're just put in with beginners. Uh, the curriculum is rotating. Uh, there's an emphasis on basics. We do some moving basics, combinations, do some pad work. Kids are really learning all about the protocol, and 30 minutes is enough. I'm just getting started. 30 minutes is enough. I'm not going to do a lot of push-ups, sit-ups, and that. That's not the purpose of this. The purpose is to give me a foundation in martial arts basics. So this class, when you start trying to fit in your schedule, should be prime time. Uh, you're probably going to do one of these a day, and you want to make it um, accessible to everyone. So if a mom's working and she can't get the child there to 5, 30, 6 o'clock, well, that's the time. Um, if someone's off, well, they can still do the 5 or 30 to 6 o'clock class. That just seems like a really prime time for your basic class. Other classes are going to work around that. We're really looking prime time for your basic class, at least Monday through Thursday, it could be optional for Friday and Saturday. After people in the basic class, we talked about last week, they go into a 45 minute class. There's two ways of doing this. In the past, it's always been by age group and level of ability. 
So you may have a six to 12 year olds, beginners, six year olds intermediate, six year olds advanced. Recently, a lot of schools are just by doing just age group, white through brown belts or white through black belts in the same class, but I'm with my age. So four to fives are in their class, six to nines in their class, 10 to 14s in their class. It's really hard to do all those age groups and all level abilities just because you don't have time in the day. So usually you go for one or the other. Um, with the uh, school that I had in Arizona, we did the age group. I really like four and five year olds. Those are my little dragons. And then I've got six to nine. Uh, those are the young kids that are just kindergarten for second, third grade, maybe. And then 10 to 14. 10 to 14, when I changed to that age group, it did a lot for retention. Because when I had my old school in Coral Springs, we used to do six to 12 in the same class. Well, a 12 year old has teenage friends and feels like it's kind of belittling himself to be trained with six and seven year olds. When I went to 10 to 12, 14, that was really cool. 14 year olds doesn't mind being in a class with a 12 year old. 10 year old think it's kind of cool to be with these teens and preteens. So it really helped when I, with retention when I got into those groups. And then of course you have your adult class. So for the person who was asking by schedule, I just put like Monday and Wednesday, Tuesday and Thursday could be slightly different. Um, another thing is I like to name my classes. So my basic class is my basic class. Uh, my other classes are leadership. So the first six months I'm in basic, after basic, I want a title for it. I just don't want to be an age group, but I want to have a title. This gives its identity and also leads to having a real nice uniform, a real nice look for that group. So this would be a sample schedule. Um, three to four year olds come at four o'clock. Those are my little dragons. I think I have uh, five and six. And then I got a email from Zach Sioka saying, he wants to start kids as young as three years old. Um, I know Sal Cavento starts, he's got <laughs> diaper dragons that are like 18 months old. It's still a class, but um, not everyone's ready for that move yet. So say we have our little dragons. The little dragons are uh, coming at four o'clock. And then we have leadership one. Leadership one would be our younger leadership uh, group. These are kids six to nine. 515, we have our basic program. 545, we have our leadership two. These are kids that are leadership, but a little bit older, 10 to 14. 630 is your adults. 730, you're pretty much done for the day if you're adapting this type of schedule. Uh, this is the type of schedule the bakers have. Um, David just really put theirs on steroids because they have two rooms. So each one of these groups actually can come twice per day. If you decided, I don't want to put all the kids together, I'd rather go by age group and rank. This would be a sample schedule. So now you have three to four year olds, you have little dragons. You really don't have an intermediate and advanced little dragon because they're only going to be like a little dragon for maybe a year and then they're going to go into the kids' classes. Um, you could have intermediates from like six to 12 year olds at 430. That could be your intermediate class. Uh, then at 515, you have your basic program. 545, you have your advanced kids. And then you finish up with your adults. So one way is by just age group. This way is by age group and level of ability. Again, that's your choice. Kind of depends on how many instructors you have and how you break up your program. So I started thinking about, you know, do you have to change? I'm looking at David, and uh, David's done a lot of changes in his school. That's really good. Um, some of the things, Paul Garcia, I got a chance to meet up with him this weekend in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I've known Paul for a long time, since the early 90s. Uh, he's got very successful schools with 650-plus members in each school. Uh, when I first met him, he was a Taekwondo instructor. Um, he liked the self-defense techniques I was doing with Kenpo, so he started doing um, Taekwondo for his kids, and then he started doing uh, uh, Kenpo for his adults. Now he switched over to Muay Thai and Krav Maga for his adults. He still does the same program for the kids. So 
this man has changed styles three times in the last 20 something years. Um, he's changed the time of his classes. When I really say time of the classes, the length of his classes, I mean, back in the day was 60 minute classes, 90 minutes for adults. Um, since then he has, you know, found a better way to keep attention span and bringing the kids classes down the basic class down to 30 minutes, regular classes for 45 minutes. At one time, he was probably like everyone else in the country doing testing every single month. Um, a lot of schools don't do that anymore. They test on a quarterly cycle. Well, you know, Paul's made that change too. He does uh, testing on a quarterly cycle. So a lot of times over the, um, his course of time with his school, he's made changes. Tom Baker, a good friend from Arizona who's got um, East Mesa Karate, he's made a ton of uh, changes. He went from Kenpo to do my universal kids curriculum. Um, when his school started getting really, really packed, he had to start doing classes by age group. So he switched over to the elements curriculum. So he went uh, from classes by ability to classes by age. Um, he changed his testing requirements. He stopped doing testing. He started doing the stripe system. Eventually went to graduations. We were doing graduations four times a year. Um, uh, March, June, September, and December. Uh, my buddy, uh, Barry Vanover, Barry uh, runs uh, Premier Martial Arts. Him and I created that in the early 2000s. Barry has changed everything, and it's probably really cool that he did. Uh, when I first met Barry, he was a Kung Fu instructor. Um, he lived in the office of his house. Uh, it was really cool because there was a gym next door, so he had a gym membership so he can go take a shower. Um, I remember going to an event with him, and he just came up to me at the end of the event and goes, just tell me what I've got to do to make $10,000 a month. I'll do it. Just tell me exactly what I have to do. He changed styles. He changed schedule. He changed everything. He changed their uniforms, everything that he's changed. And then with Premier, again, he made a total rotation of everything. And now it's probably one of the most successful chains of schools in the United States. But here's a man who just did everything, no longer lives in a school, hasn't lived in a school a long time. Um, he does very, very good uh, with his schools. Uh, with his franchise and financially. I did a lot of changes. You know, I've changed uh, styles for kids. When I moved from Florida, Ed Parker was alive. He was my master instructor. Um, I talked to us a, a lot about changing the styles for kids. He gave me a, a go ahead and I did that. I changed our ranking system to because uh, I wanted to make sure there was 12 steps. So we had to have belts. We had to add in different colors. Uh, I changed from giving kids a black belt to a junior black belt. So they got their uh, junior black belt in three years and it took them another three years to get a solid black belt. I changed from length of times from like 60 minute classes to 45, 30 and 45. This was a big change. When I first met Ed Parker, I used to teach Kempo in Connecticut. All my students took 30 minute private classes. So at the time I had like 200 students 200 private classes per week. I couldn't do them. So I had a staff of like five other instructors and we all had a place in this big large room where we taught private classes. And I was talking to Mr. Park. He goes, you're going to kill yourself doing this. He says, you're going to be working too hard, which I was, I was working from 10 in the morning to 10 at night. He says, you, it's going to be tough financially. As you start growing, you're going to start watering down instructors because you can't instructors, get instructors fast enough. I want you to go to group classes. So I had a change from everyone getting individual private classes to now everyone's in groups. Of course, my letter to them, it sounded a little bit different. We went from privates to semi-privates. <laughs> semi-privates by uh, uh, color belts. But I mean, that was a huge change for people paying for private classes. Now they still paid the same amount, but they got group classes. And I changed from testing to graduations. So why am I uh, saying all these changes? Is just to give you references that to get different results, people have to do things differently. And um, in the martial arts, a lot of us are bound by tradition. Um, I see that. I think there's a lot of great tradition that we should follow. I think the protocol, 
uh, the values, all that is so much important uh, to the martial arts. But as far as actually instruction, um, a lot of our traditional martial arts was never meant to be done commercially and never tell people to water it down. You know, I never try to think of uh, having the, the McDojo type of thing where people are just, it's like a belt factory. But changes can be good for your, your program. Sometimes they're necessary. So why change? Our industry changes. You know, I was talking to Jerry Prince uh, before we started doing this and I started recording it. And we just talked about the adult programs. I was saying that I went down to uh, Fort Lauderdale this past weekend, was talking to Alan Predelin, who teaches Krav Maga in um, California, and he has actually introduced some jiu-jitsu, and he's telling me that in Tel Aviv, which you would think be the biggest school would be Krav, uh, Krav Maga, the biggest school is actually BJJ. So our industry changes. Um, values of people changing. Uh, someone says, well, why would people want to do something like Krav Maga than traditional martial arts? They don't have time. You know, they, they want to go in. They want to learn to protect themselves. They don't want to carry a gun, but they want to make sure that they can get home safe at night. They don't want to spend three years doing it. They want to spend six months, six weeks, six months, and get it all. Well, their values have changed. Uh, again, people's goals have changed. It may not be black belt. It may be self-defense. Um... Maybe for a better income, you start thinking, okay, I want to expand. I want to open other schools. Um, it's really hard for me to train a lot of different instructors from different schools. If I adopt some of these changes, I can run a school with 100 plus students with one master instructor, one full time instructor, and someone running my front desk. So, you know, I can make a better income for myself as well as give more opportunities to people that come up through me and want to do martial arts as a career. Um, so I think people understand why they should change. And I think why they don't is, again, that fear, the fear that things are going okay now. But if I change something and it actually gets worse, I'm going to be in a world of hurt. So when you want to change something, you can see the benefit yourself but now you have to create the benefit for all your students. So understand the benefits. I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna be able to give better service. I'm gonna get more people into my schedule. I'm gonna find it easier getting a uh, trial into my regular program because they're just trying my regular program off. So it's not gonna be a difference between a private class. So you have to understand the benefits. Give yourself a month. Uh, I know that doesn't seem like a long time, but if I want to start doing uh, graduations, I'm going to give myself a month. I'm just going to cancel graduations for the next month. I'm going to do it the month after. Everyone's been in the same cycle. And from now on, I'm going to do graduations four times a year instead of 12 times a year. Announce the changes in the benefits for the students. This is Everyone says, what's in it for me? You know, I know it's life's easier for you, Mr. Silva. That's cool. But what's in it for me as a parent of the student or as a student? Well, you know, it could be increased attention. When I went from private classes to group classes, the benefit for the students was you're just always practicing with me. You don't know what you're, you're going to have attackers from different sizes, different age groups, different weights. I want you to practice your self-defense with other people, not just me. So that was a benefit for the students. Going to um, a basic class, so now you're having just white and yellow belts in there. Everyone's going to get more attention. All your new students get all the attention because it's all new students. You know, if you're doing the age group, I can have more classes per day. So my classes are going to be smaller. Again, people can get increased uh, uh, attention. It could be increased focus. One of the cool things about testing every three months instead of every month, everybody's working at the same thing at the same time. This is the curriculum this month. Everyone in the classes is working the same exact curriculum, and they're all three months away from uh, their next graduation. Next month, they're working on the exact same thing. It's like teamwork, and we're all in this together. We're one month away from graduation. Uh, so it's increased focus, team goals, um, if you're doing things right, it could be a faster track to black belt because everyone is getting more attention and more focus. 
And the whole idea is to get better students. Me going from private classes to group classes got me better students because they had other people, for example, so it wasn't just them. You know, they had people uh, around them that were better than them that would help motivate them. So if you're going to make the changes, you know, understand the benefits to yourself. When I say give yourself a month, because well, I don't want you to put it off. If you say I'm going to change next year at this time, you're probably not going to do it. So put yourself on the spot. Do it now. And think about the benefits for the students. Will you have a mass exit of students? I've never seen this happen. Will some people quit? Maybe. All your students are going to quit sooner or later anyway. Um, but <laughs> that's a morbid thought. But we're talking last week, you said, hey, if I'm average and 7% of my students quit each month, that's 84% of your students right now are going to quit by next year. So if you lose some, well, you know, the benefits are going to outweigh the deficit. So you may lose one or two. I've seen people do massive changes. Uh, Doug Bertrand has got a school. He had a Kung Fu school. He switched over to the universal curriculum. He went from Kung, uniform, Kung Fu uniforms to black pants with blue shirts. Decided he didn't like that, so he went to white uniforms. Decided he didn't look, look like that. He went over to black uniforms. Guy ch changed uh, everything like four times in one year. And he didn't have a massive uh, exit of the uh, students. Uh, when he started making all the changes, he had 50 students. Now he's got 1,300 in two schools. So, again, the benefit outweighed uh, losing a couple of students during the changes. So that's my stuff for today. I know a lot of you learned it. David, is this your uh, son with you? Very cool. David said his uh, son's going to come back and start working at a school for marketing instruction. So very, very cool. What's your son's name? Dalton. Very cool, Dalton. Kind of exciting. I like it. Uh -huh. I'm excited too. I'm excited to see what we can do. Nice. No, I have one question, maybe for the for the group here. Um, what can we do, or what's what are some ideas to 